Hey, it's Sadia Dio, your host, and this is a trigger warning. Today's episode will be covering domestic violence, and it contains potentially triggering content for trauma survivors. Listen at your own risk. So I remember my first domestic violence relationship, and I was only 13 years old, and he was 18 years old. I know what you guys are thinking. Sagittary Ray, was it consensual? Was the relationship even allowed to be? And the answer is no, it was consensual on my part, even though I was 13 years old. And legally, I couldn't consent. However, I did. He didn't force me to do anything that I didn't want to do, but he was abusive to me in this manifest three years in a relationship. A 13-year-old with an 18-year-old, I know you guys are thinking, what does they want with one another? I didn't realize that I was being groomed or anything like that. So I I thought I was in love. Um, I didn't come from a household where we had money or anything like that. And this man had a stable income. He was receiving Social Security benefits for a disability. And he was buying me nice things, which felt really refreshing. And taking me out to dates like Coney Island, which I was really flattered with. So we pursued this relationship, even though he was significantly older than me. And he eventually got me pregnant. Now, I'm 14 years old, pregnant, just entering high school. And I'm scared to tell my parents, what what am I going to do? Um, my parents didn't know I was pregnant or even had a hint that I was pregnant. So when they took me to the doctor, I sabotaged it by eating. So that way I couldn't get the sonogram that was scheduled. And they found out months later, um, the neighborhood that I'm from is from Crown Heights. I grew up in Omni Projects. And everyone talked about me like a dog. How was she going to take care of the baby? She should get an abortion, this, this, that, that, that. My mom did take me to an abortion clinic, but overall it was my decision. And I decided that after years of taking care of my siblings, I wanted to have my own child and have a baby of my own. And that is what I did. I gave birth to my daughter on March 28, 2002, 22 years ago at the age of 15 years old. And when I tell you it was tumultuous, it was tumultuous. ACS, I got involved because of the age. I was 15. He was 20 years old at the time, and that was considered sagittary rape. He was arrested in jail. He did not serve any jail time because I told the truth, and my parents did not wish to press charges against him. However, CPS did want us to get supervised visitation and contact. We were not allowed to be alone. And he was cheating on me with a young lady that was his age. And come to find out they had been back and forth on and off for years before I even met him. Now, he had, um, he had put his hands on me before And I never told anybody 
about the abuse. I just kept it to myself. I felt weak. I felt disheveled. I felt scared. I felt like nobody was going to believe me. And I also was confused and didn't know what to do. So I didn't do anything. Um, he also had put his hands on this young lady who seemingly was pregnant, but I did not know at the time. And the baby was born on my birthday. When I had seen her, she had a black eye and she was staying in the apartment that he lived in with his mom and his family. I asked her, why did she decide to stay? She said, because she had nowhere else to go. And I knew right then and there that I couldn't be um, another victim to him. This was a recurring thing. And I'm, I'm tired of men saying to women how they could see how a woman's mouth would make him put hands on a woman. I don't understand how a woman speaking up for herself triggers some men because all men are not abusers, all men are not cheaters. So I just want to make that disclaimer that when I say men or women, I'm not saying all. I'm referring to some of the men. I don't know all men in this world. I don't know all women. So... I don't want to generalize all in one category. But it's not fair that we could be disrespected as women and men, when they feel disrespected or slighted, they retaliate by putting their hands on you. I don't think that's okay at all in no shape or form is abuse okay. Verbal abuse, emotional, financial, physical, mental, spiritual. Like there are so many ways you could be abused that it's insane. Now, back to this story. We had to be supervised while we had contact for my daughter's sake because of the ACS order. And I remember the last year was... I just turned 17 on my birthday. And there were other instances where he had put his hands on before the 17. Like, um, he attempted to beat me up while I was outside holding my daughter and my cousins. I got involved and they stopped the assault on me because I was going to a party. He was very controlling at 20. Something is, oh, he wanted to manipulate me, control me, just wanted me to do things his way. And when I, when he realized that he no longer had that control over me, that's when the abuse had increased. So for my 17th birthday, we were having a dispute about a cell phone that was provided to me. And I wanted to call my grandma because my grandma normally... She wished me happy birthday. She would give me birthday money. And that was my tradition. I would go see my grandma on my birthday. She was the closest woman to me at that time in my life. Besides my mom, who was um, in and out of our life because of unspeakable circumstances. So he felt like I was being disrespectful to him and he beat me up. He um he fractured my thumb. I had a black eye, had knots all over my forehead, and then he had kidnapped my daughter, which I didn't agree or condone with. But there was nothing else that I could do, so I had to go get treatment from the hospital and we had alerted my family and I had alerted the authorities who said that it wasn't 
kidnapping because technically that is his daughter. So that made me feel so hurt because I never knew if I was going to get her again. My siblings did not know about the abuse. So they had let him in to get some stuff, his personal items, such as his social security card, birth certificate, and things like that. And he took my baby with him to his cousin's house. Now, his cousin had a lot of sense and was alerted and fought him for my daughter and actually brought her back to me the same night, which I appreciate and I love him for that forever because he didn't have to get involved with the situation, but he chose to for me. He chose to do what was right as a man. I would like to say that ladies and men who are in abusive relationship, there is a beautiful life outside of abuse, and you can definitely get the help that you need. All you have to do is just take a step back. Think about is this really worth it? Is this relationship worth me possibly dying over? Because there are abusive relationships that do and have resulted in death or life changing injuries, sustaining injuries that broken ribs, broken bones being set on fire. I know it's not easy because I went through it myself and it's not it's not easy to walk away. It's actually hard when you you tend to think that you love this person and you want to stay with them for the kids. We as women tend to stay with men we no longer love or are in love with because they're all we know. But we have children with them. And that's no longer an excuse. That's no longer a rationale of why you're subjecting yourself to being abused. Safe Horizon is a good network to contact if you are ever in an abusive relationship and you want out. I'm no longer suppressing my femininity. So a man can feel secure or dim in my light. I do be mindful of how I interact with men at the age of 38 now and how I speak to them. Because some men do have abusive tendencies. And a red flag that I realize of that is the slight his disagreement, he disrespects you and call you out your name. For me, that's a red flag because I can have a conversation or a debate with you or even a dispute and I don't have to disrespect you in the same breath. So for a man to do that to a woman, red flag number one. Getting so angry that you destroy property, a red flag number two. Getting angry and putting you down and calling your names, another red flag. Like, all of these are red flags in the beginning. Because if you cannot control your anger, no matter what I say, what I do, when you're dating an abusive man, it's always going to be an issue. Something is always going to be triggering. I've dated the same man in different bodies for years. And when I say that, I say that there was something about, this is how I feel, my aura that kept attracting abusive and manipulative men. 
in my life. Back to back to back. Um, One guy was super cool, but he was very manipulative. He manipulated me for use of my vehicle while I would be at work. He would have my vehicle. He would run errands for me. He would buy me gifts. It was like love bombing just to get what he wanted. And once he no longer got what he wanted, bam, I got slapped one day while driving off guard. And I, and I left him alone. Then he kept stalking me. He kept harassing me. He kept sending me nasty text messages saying that I was a piece of shit. I wasn't worth much. I was ugly. I would never be anything. And just like really, really mean and hateful things. Which made me have to move and get a safety transfer. Because the abuse in the aftermath of leaving was so much. He did initially plead guilty to... I can't remember his charge, but he did plead guilty. I'm not sure if he got any jail time or just probation or whatever the fine was for that crime. Um, Another man I dated was super love bombing in the beginning as well. And this is all in my young 20s. These relationships. My last abusive relationship was with my son's father, Prince Dior. May Prince Dior sleep in heavenly peace. And I would be spat on. I would be punched, kicked, choked, called all kinds of whores and accused of cheating and doing things that I was not doing. And I don't want to blame his mental health for anything. I don't want to blame his mental health for the reason why he act the way he act. Because mental health is not an excuse for being abusive or disrespectful at all. Mental health is actually, it should be an eye-opener on to why you should get help. I, too, have a mental health disorder. And I'm not going around abusing people or making fun of them or harassing them or anything like that. And I don't think that People can't love you and still abuse you. I think people can love and still be abusive. However, love is not abuse. That's not enough to stay around for. It's really not. And I always was one who tend to be in relationships back to back to back to back to back. Like, I had to tell myself, Sadia, it's okay and necessary for you to be single as you find yourself. That is okay. You don't always have to be with a man. A man doesn't validate who you are. One of my friends, her sister, actually 
was killed by her abuser. And it's really triggering and it's traumatizing because you think that the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with or even that time that y'all are dating would be filled with so much love, peace, and happiness. And that's not the case. A lot of us, men and women, are being abused on a day-to-day basis. And we go to work, we go into the world with this mask on. We cover our bruises with makeup. We, we protect our abuser. And it's like, for what? For what? Hoping that they change? Most people don't change unless they want to change. In the United States, an estimated one in four women and one in nine men are victims of domestic violence. Domestic violence is thought to be underreported, with 75% of incidents going unreported. Okay? Domestic violence can cause physical and psychological health issues, decrease quality of life, and decrease practic- productivity. You, you may not want to do anything. Women are more likely to be victims of domestic violence than men, with women being five to eight times more likely to be victimized. And the ages are between 18 and 34. 18 is so young. And sometimes it starts younger than that. In 60% to 80% of intimate partner homicides, the man physically abused the woman before the murder. Let's, let's talk about it. Our men, some of our men are killing our women over insecurities unhealed childhood traumas. And so much more. We gotta we have to do better. We have to date better. We have to heal better. Both men and women. We have to acknowledge that we are hurting as a people as a community, we have to be okay with walking away. Men, you have to learn how to check your egos, how to deal with your insecurities. You know, women, We have to learn how to work on our self-esteem, self-love, our dignity, our value, our morale, our worth. Before I leave you guys, I'm going to leave the domestic violence hotline contact information because help is available. You could call 800-799-7233 or you could text BEGIN to the number 88788.